In this video, we're going to be taking a look on pages 88 and 89, which is entitled Insert a Table. Now, adding a table to a document is a useful way to illustrate information that is intended for quick reference and analysis. A table is a grid of columns and rows that can fill or that you can fill with text and graphics. Now, a cell is a box formed by the intersection of a column and row. Uh, if you've ever played the game Battleship, uh, if you would say, you know, B4, uh, then you say, oh, you suck my Battleship. Well, that B4 would be representative of a cell, so it's just an intersection between a row and a column. Now, the lines that divide the columns and rows of a table, and uh, it helps you see the grid-like structure of the table, and we call those things the borders. And, of course, a simple way to insert a table into a document is to use the Insert Table command on the Insert tab. So if we take a look at step one, it tells us that we want to scroll until we see the preventative options. So uh, if you're at the bottom of the document, like I am here, you're going to have to scroll up uh, on there until you get to page two. And that's where we need to be at is page two. And that's where we want to see this at. And we want to make sure that the preventative options for serious traveler uh, health issue is at the top of our document. The next we're going to select the heading preventative options so we're going to select this heading and the two paragraph marks below it so we want to select this entire area right here this is step two and then of course now we're going to click on the page layout tab once we do that we're going to click the, uh, the columns button and that's in the page setup group and we're going to click on one column. Once we do that, we're going to click the heading now just to deselect the text. And then we're going to scroll down to see uh, the bottom half of page two uh, on there as well. Now, of course, a continue when we have text selected like that and we click on the columns and we change it to one column, a continuous section break is now inserted before the heading and after the second paragraph mark, which is going to be creating a new uh, section. So instead of putting in a couple different breaks, whenever you have text selected and you make a uh, change such as columns and everything, that's going to automatically insert in the section breaks for you. And of course, that's going to create this new section, which we see down here is going to be section three. Now, the document now includes four sections. Now, originally we only had two. Because we did this, now we have four. And that's going to have the heading uh, preventative options now in section three. And notice that this section is going to be a um, independent section. If we scroll down a little bit, notice that this is all in two uh, columns uh, like the rest of the document with the exception of section one that we've seen earlier. Now step three tells us that we want to place the insertion point before the par first paragraph mark below the heading. So we're going to place our insertion point right here and it tells us that we want to click on the insert tab. Then next we want to click the table button here and of course, uh, then we're going to click on insert table down here. Now, if you want to insert a quick table, you can do this right here and choose the size of it. But notice that it only gives you an 8 by 10 table. If you want more uh, columns or rows on there, you do have to click on the insert table, which is what we're going to click here. And of course, the insert table dialog box opens. And you use this dialog box to create a blank table. Now, in uh, step four, it tells us that we want to type five in the number of columns uh, on there. So we want to make sure it has five columns. And then next, we're going to press our tab key, and we're going to type in six for the number of rows. We want to make sure that this fixed column with uh, options button is selected, and we're going to click on OK. Now, of course, you can have an auto fit to the contents or auto fit to the window, uh, but we're not going to choose those right now uh, because we don't have any information in this uh, uh, table that we're going to insert. Now, of course, once you have a table inserted in, if you ever want to delete a table, you have to click in the table and then you click on the Table Tools Layout tab, which notice that we now have a couple different tabs up here. 
and then you're going to click the delete button in the rows and columns group and then click on delete table so if we would go here um, of course here we have the rows and columns there's the delete and you can delete the table that way if you made a mistake of course however uh, of course now we see that we have a blank table here with five columns um, on there and six rows of course if we take a look here's one two three four five six one two three four uh, notice that there's the five one two three four five columns and then there's the six rows so just remember the columns is what goes straight up and down and of course the rows is what goes across and of course one of these little boxes right here that's what we call our cell now of course the insertion point is in the upper left cell of the table and the table tools design tab becomes the active tab in step five it tells us that we want to click on our home button or our home tab and then we're going to click on the show hide button and of course then that removes the formatting marks and of course in the first cell we're going to type in the word disease and then of course we're going to press our tab key and of course uh, that's going to move it to our next cell directly to the right is what uh, where it moves your insertion point when you hit your tab key uh, in a table and of course next we're going to type in vaccine press our tab key again and we're going to type in uh, prophylaxis drug press tab we want to type in eat and drink safely press our tab and then avoid insects and our final tab or our fire, a final uh, column in that first row of course if we hit our tab key again it's going to take us down to the second row in the first column now of course don't be concerned if the text wraps to the next line in a cell as you type like eat and drink safely it moved down to another uh, line on there so don't be uh, concerned with that at this time now pressing tab moves the insertion point to the next cell in the row or to the first cell in the next row now step six tells us that we want to type in malaria of course a quick tip you can also click in this cell to move the insertion point to it so uh, if you don't want to uh, hit your tab to go to the next one you can also just click in the cell and then of course we're going to press tab tab and then next what we're going to do is we're going to click on our bullets list arrow up here so we're going to click on this list arrow and we're going to click on the check mark style here and of course notice that puts a check mark underneath the prophylaxis drug then next we're going to hit tab tab again and then we're going to click on the bullets button again and of course notice that once you select your style of bullet uh, whenever you click on the bullets button it's going to automatically appear there now of course you could also insert in uh, symbols and everything else to do this as well so that's uh, one way of doing this uh, of course there's different ways that you can do uh, many of the things in word if we hit our tab key again uh, we're now going to look on page word 89 and fill in the rest of the text information so underneath malaria we're going to type in typhoid hit our tab key and then hit our bolds button then hit and it's not it does not have a prophylaxis drug so we're going to click on the eat and drink safely and then we're going to go down to the uh, fourth column in which we're going to type in hepatitis A we're going to hit our bolds button there and of course it won't have anything else in this row so we're going to go down below underneath hepatitis A and we're going to type in chloridia and it's going to have check marks underneath vaccine and eat and drink safely and in our final row on here, we're going to type in Japanese encephalitis. And of course, we're going to have our 
uh, bullets underneath the vaccine and avoid insects. Now once you have your table filled out right here, and of course notice that this is a quick reference, so we can take a look and say, okay, so different options. If I want to avoid malaria, I can take a prophylactic drug and I just need to avoid insects. For typhoid, I need to take a vaccine and I, can, I should eat and drink safely while I'm in that country. Uh, for hepatitis A, I just need to take a vaccine, and for the other ones, you can see there's the different options. Once we have this completed up, it tells us in step eight, uh, that we want to click the Table Tools Layout tab. And of course a quick tip as well, if you press the Tab key after the last row, it's going to add another row. So if I would hit the Tab key again, notice that there's a new row, and of course it's going to copy the check marks from here. To get rid of that, just click on your Undo button, and that's going to undo the creation of a new row. Because once you hit the very last row, and uh, very last cell in the table, it's going to automatically add in a new row. But once we click on the Table Tools Layout tab, we're going to click on the Auto Fit button in the Cell Size Group. So here we have our Cell Size Group right here. We're going to click on Auto Fit. Now once we have this, we're going to click on Auto Fit to Contents. And of course notice that the table shrinks up a little bit and it fits this to automatically fit the table to the information that's inside of it. So no longer do we have to worry about it flowing down to another line. Uh, everything's all on one line. Uh, it makes the table a little bit more form-fitting to the information. However, it, this doesn't really look good on the page. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the auto-fit button again and we're going to auto-fit it to the window. And of course now the width of the table columns is adjusted to fit the text and to fit the window. Uh, so you can either choose one or the other or you can actually choose both. In step 9, it tells us that we want to click the select button in the table group. So here we have uh, the table. We're going to click on select here. And it tells us that we want to click the align center. Uh, excuse me. Uh, once we uh, click on this, we want to click on select table. So notice that that selects the entire table. Then next, we're going to click on the align center button in the alignment group. So here's our alignment group. And of course we have Align Top Center, but it's in this group of nine buttons right here, and there is the Align Center. So we want to click on that. So what it's going to do is it's going to center uh, all the text in there. Once we have that, we're going to click on Disease. So we're just going to click right here in this first uh, uh, cell right here. And then of course we're going to click on our Select button again. And now we're going to select uh, the column. Once we have that, we're going to click on the Align Center Left button. So that is directly to the left of the Align Center button. And of course, that's going to move this information over to the left. Now, you'll have to play around with this to make sure that it is visually appealing to you. Uh, you may have liked it in the center. You may like it on the left. You may want to align to the right. Uh, really, these are personal preferences that you can choose. But for your assignment, make sure that you do follow the directions. Then, of course, now we just want to click inside the table somewhere to deselect uh, the column. And in step 10, we want to go back to our design, uh, Table Tools Design tab. And we're going to click on this More button here in the Table Styles group. And, of course, now notice that we have all these different styles on how we can have our table. Now, of course, there is a live preview, but most of it is covered up by the uh, uh, table's uh, uh, styles group uh, menu that appears but what we want to do is we want to choose the list table uh, on here so here's our list tables group down here and we want to choose accent to style so if we look at the different areas we can see that of course if we put our mouse pointer over it it gives us the name there uh, if we look in on page uh, word 89 uh, we see roughly what the style is going to look like so we know it's roughly uh, kind of a orangish color and uh, it's going to have just a uh, straight line so it's not an alternating color so we can see that it's roughly going to be right here uh, of course this is the list table 3 accent 2 so uh, that's going to be on the second row third column underneath the list tables once we select that now our table has been formatted 
into this list table three accent two style. And of course, notice that uh, you know here we have uh, all of our information. The borders have been uh, colored. Uh, the font has been formatted for us. And of course, these table styles includes the format settings for the table or for the text borders and shading in the table. Now, of course, you can also format the table text using the buttons on the mini toolbar if you had to as well. Now that concludes the information about inserting a table on, per, on pages uh, 88 and 89. Uh, you're ready to move on to the next video in which we're going to be talking about adding footnotes and endnotes.